the harvest season has passed. With a plentiful yield and prosperous year drew to a close, it has not ended with only joy and serendipity. These past seasons, we witnessed the chaos the wild boars can bring. In their native environment, they contribute a lot in their primary habitat. With their rooting behavior, they use their snouts to dig into the soil in search for food. This helps nutrient cycling and growth promotion of specific flora within the vicinity by turning over the soil, burying the seeds, and aerating it. They also disperse seeds when they move to one area over another, letting them become one of the most effective pollinators and vectors of plant dispersal. When they wallow, they assist in creating microhabitats for insects, certain plant species, and even new mammals. Their population is also controlled by their predators, stopping them from spreading and keeping them in check. Take a look at this tiger. She gazes at her prey without creating any drastic movement, letting the wild boar come near the water. Seizing the opportune moment, she executes a strategic pounce on the wild boar with precision. Now, the bounty is hers to feast. However, in their non-native habitats, it's the other way around. Remarkably destructive, they showcase their power by ravaging the lands like never before. With an incredible sense of smell, their noses can smell crops and large fields yielding their food and diet. The adult pigs bring their borlets with them and enter the fields to eat the crops the farmers prepare to harvest. They don't hold back when they ruin the farmland. leaving only damaged goods for farmers to see. Today, we will explore the importance of their diet for these feral pigs and how to mitigate their effects in the farmlands. Corn, an indispensable crop for wild boars. Corn provides the best nutrients and energy for any wild boar. We can say it is one of their favorite foods to munch leaving cornfields their main targets. They come and hide within the cornfields to destroy every crop they see, starting from the middle towards the outside. In the United States, wild boar damages and expenses can rise to $2.5 billion annually, while in Australia can range up to 100 million Australian dollars per year. The government has been bolstering its efforts to subdue and combat them, especially when Texas harvest season comes near. However, the number of wild boars has increased drastically over time, making it difficult for the farmers and hunters to control. An estimated 8.9 million wild boars roam inside the border of the United States, according to a USDA report in 2022. Texas has been infested by more than 3.5 to 4 million wild boars within its state alone, reporting a 17% loss of their yield in recent years. Despite the wild boars' impact on agriculture, their effects spread throughout the urban areas as well. They bring significant damage to green areas around the cities and traffic accidents. They also pose threats and problems in public safety and waste management. They are aggressive, despite not being cornered, making them a serious threat to humans and livestock. Due to the wild boar invasion across the land, hunting has become a fun activity enjoyed by many who adore sport hunting. Despite being one of the effective methods to decrease the wild boar's number, 
Such acts somehow traumatize the wild boars and train them to avoid the hunters making the wild boar's population dispersed. We also need to follow legal regulations in this process. There are some states that allow shooting wild hogs freely such as Texas, Oklahoma, and Georgia, to name a few. However, New York, Michigan, Wisconsin, and more do not allow free wild boar hunts in these states. Hunters often hide and sneak in while wild boars are occupied, taking advantage and hunting them with accuracy and finesse. Hunters also integrate technology with their hunts, such as automated recognition systems, enabling them to monitor feral hogs' movement and their habitats. They also use hunting platforms to collaborate and share wild hog sightings to cover more ground and increase their efficiency. Some farmers also opt for trapping techniques to catch an entire sounder with just one drop. They can also use smart traps and add species-specific baits to only target wild boars. However, there are still some incidents of catching non-target species. It can also be labor-intensive to monitor the traps in large areas. Some of the best brands out there are Pig Brig Trap Systems, known for easy transport, and its multi-catch system. Hog Eye Camera System, which includes a coral trap and a camera to perfectly monitor the sounders to have perfect catch even at night with its night vision camera. Similar to the previous one, Boar Buster is also one of the best alternatives. It has a 24-7 motion sensor alerting you when wild boars start coming. It also features a suspended corral system letting the sounders come from any direction making it ideal for a large sounder catch. Wild boars often panic once caught. They will run back and forth and even throw themselves to the cage just to try their chances to escape their impending fate. Their misery will be ended by a shot or be purchased by wild boar farms to create an exotic type of meat which is highly regarded in the culinary field. Using poison to control wild boars is also implemented in some regions. However, such a method can also pose risks to the environment or other species. It can cause contamination, human health risks, and the development of resistance to poison over time. It is also facing ethical dilemmas due to the method administered. There are also subtle ways being implemented by farmers to repel the wild boars, such as deterrence, habitat management, and genetic management. Deterrents are often used to repel wild boars with acoustic, olfactory devices, or motion-activated lighting. It can easily alter the behavior of wild boars preventing habituation. Habitat management, on the other hand, focuses on environmental alteration to make the landscape less conducive for them to live in. Water management is also crucial in habitat management to discourage them from coming near agricultural areas. When it comes to genetic management, they emphasize genetic modification to induce sterility in wild boar population. In contrast, such notions are being challenged ethically as genetic engineering remains controversial as it can create unintended mutations. What do you think is the best way to reduce the population of wild boars? Let us know in the comments.